This is a response video to some of the more stupid comments on a couple of my videos about uh, wiring stuff, especially in the off-grid, uh, the portable, uh, the, the portable off-grid uh, uh, power system, the small uh, solar generator, if you want to call it that. And in some of my systems, what I do is I take uh, your three-element uh, electrical power cord. I I do a little bit of trimaging and I adapt that over to 12 volt use. Okay, so here's the situation when we buy cable. Uh, and it's one of those little things, I don't know why a lot of the people in electrical school tell you wrong stuff, but they do, okay? It is one of the ways they screw around to sort you out between somebody who maybe goes, gets a little bit of schooling, tries to go to work with it without doing an apprenticeship or something like that. I, I'm guessing but I see that uh, a lot. And for some strange reason, I see it in the solar industry more than other parts of the electrical installation world. So here's a real deal on this situation. Okay, cable is rated by amperage, okay? It, it, when they say it's volts, that's kind of a guideline. When it, uh, Volts, when you're talking about whether something like 12, 24, 110, 120, all that kind of shit, Okay, volts is a variable, okay? It's, it's kind of like a range. And uh, when we talk about 12 volt stuff, that can be anything from 10 to 15, 18 volts. When we talk about amperage, that's really the limits of the power that that uh, wire can carry. So when we look at 12 volt or DC operation, solar stuff can be anywhere from 12 volt DC all the way up to 120 volt DC okay I said 120 volt DC now what matters on a bunch of that stuff is the amperage rating when we talk about house electrical wire we're talking about usually in this stuff solid core wire now one there's several different reasons they want to go with solid core wire once it's installed somewhere it takes hundreds of years to deteriorate to the point where it's going to be a problem. One reason you don't necessarily see that in automotive applications like RVs, although some people do put it in RVs and a lot of people put it in the tumbleweed tiny houses, is the more you flex solid core wire, the more it degrades, which is why um, stranded wire, which has like a bunch of little wires that bundle together to make another wire, that's why stranded wire is used on electrical power cords, okay? And I'm talking about power cords like when you go buy extension cords. So I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to give you a headache watching a video. But when we talk about extension cords on outdoor power cords, we're not necessarily talking about this stuff. Now, when they say low voltage cable, this, you can still do a lamp cord, okay? You can still do 120 volts on this. Just don't try to run a shitload of amps through it, okay? Um, high voltage, low voltage, kind of, you know, depends a little bit on how somebody feels when they're, when they're telling you what's high voltage or low voltage. Because what happens is, we, we don't know what the amperage ratings are, but on household stuff, okay, we, we've got connect, copper connectors and all this. The vast majority of all this stuff is going to be rated for 15 amps. Now, there's a lot of solar equipment out there, which when you're talking about small portable cabin systems, a lot of that stuff goes 30 amps, but it's not as much power on the DC side as what you would see in AC side, which is kind of weird, right? Okay, well here's how you simplify the whole thing. Look at the amperage ratings on your panels, the amperage ratings on your system, and the amperage ratings on all of the switches. And you'll find that a bunch of these do go 20 amp. Now, if you need to make stuff switch 30, 50, 60, 80 amps of like a larger array, you can get those too, but usually they're in the breaker section. That's it. Not necessarily a switch, it's a breaker. Now the cool thing about breakers is they'll automatically turn off if you run over power. Switches don't. Switches do not automatically turn off 
if for some reason there's too much power running through them. Now GFCIs might, but GFCIs are specifically made for AC power and they get goofy on DC power. When we look at repurposing electrical power cords, you got to realize that all of these have been engineered to be flexible. They're engineered to be coiled and uncoiled multiple times. That's why it's stranded cable. But you know what? They carry what the amperage rating is on the cord. Okay? So when we look at these things, this one's nice and heavy duty. It's rated for 15 amps, 13 amps. Now you start getting into these little lamp cords, you'll see lower amperage ratings. The thing is, when I'm looking at like 50 to 150 watt panels, those are all under 10 amps. So if you're talking about a single lamp cord, power cord type of thing, running a single one of those panels, it's not going to be a problem. Now, when you look at another number on this stuff, like whether it's 14 gauge wire or 16 gauge wire, there's little things on here to tell you whether it's light or medium gauge gives you little examples of the type of stuff you could use with that when we're talking about an 80 watt solar panel we're looking at maybe five to seven amps of power which is well within the amperage rating for all of these cords so what does that give us well that gives us a waterproof cord that gives us a cord which can be coiled and uncoiled multiple times because it's thin stranded cable it's entirely capable of carrying all the electricity that you're going to be pumping through it on those low amperage systems. Now, the other thing that you're going to run into is they got this neat little gauge on what your stuff is. Notice that you're getting into 10 gauge, just kind of like with guns. The smaller the number, the thicker the stuff, right? So when we get into 10 gauge and we start going distances, what happens? Our amp rating drops. So if we have 15 gauge or 14 gauge uh, cable, which is relatively thin stuff, notice we start getting up over 1,500 feet, our amperage drops, okay? Now that means you're actually going to lose energy in the cable, okay? So you just don't want to do that. But if you're just talking about a single panel, you know, you're running in a uh, solar generator type system, you're not going to have all that much of an issue. We start talking about this heavy duty outdoor generator cord. Well, what happens? That's 10 gauge cable and it's rated for heavier duty stuff. Now, one thing that's going to get a little weird with you sometimes is these have little LED lights in them that are going to be set up with a little voltage thing that may or may not work when you're running DC through that cable. Um, but this is where you get a lot of good ready-made cables with ready-made waterproof connectors on them which are going to be so much superior to cigarette lighter plugs it's not even funny. I, I, shouldn't even have no, I shouldn't even have to argue that with people. And as long as you do a common sense way of, of using your three element, and, and again I would say get the ones without the little light in there, uh, although some people tell me that on some of these bulbs it just doesn't matter whether it's getting AC or DC through that little bulb. But the thing is, because that's a little three element thing, you can't put those together upside down unless a tab's broken off. Therefore, it maintains your polarity. And this is all stranded cable. It's going to do just fine with DC applications. Now, what some people will get into arguing is whether or not your DC applications are going to work with like thin stranded or thick stranded cable on smaller amperage applications it just doesn't matter okay it just doesn't matter we're talking with solar generators we're not talking major thousand amp or, or 15 kW uh, power systems on buildings okay we're not talking about that stuff when we do get into that stuff there are some reasons you deal with it differently one of them is that we're not going to use the aluminum cable okay we don't use that with solar stuff you don't use aluminum cable um, you when you're trying to optimize solar house installations there are building codes on that stuff where when they want a stranded cable they're very thick stranded cable but again the strands on that stuff 
like the, the 10 and the 12 gauge solar panel cable. The strands on that stuff is so thick, it's really not the type of stuff you want to be coiling and uncoiling a whole lot all the time like you would expect to do in a solar uh, battery power system. If you're going to be coiling and uncoiling stuff a lot, what you really want is some of this rubber cord. Now what you're going to notice is a lot of this rubber cord type stuff, you know, it's still only a 12-3 cable. The thing is, you get the water resistant housing most of the time. You have a lot of flexibility. It's not going to degrade as much being coiled and uncoiled a lot. So if you're looking at a system where you think, well, we're going to set up for a while. We might even set up for a few years, but we want the option of being able to coil our stuff up and take it elsewhere. This is the stuff you can use. Okay. Now, some of this is outdoor rated and some not. Uh, most of the time, it's, it's going to be just fine outdoors. Okay. When you get into the solid core outdoor rated high amperage stuff like that gray one up there, uh, you know, like those, then that's not such a good thing. Uh, this one, I'm trying to tell if that's solid core or not. Sometimes it's going to work, sometimes not. But if you go stranded when you're doing DC op, uh, applications and in portable solar generator type stuff, uh, you, you should be fine. And then if you're doing the, the portable systems that are like, you know, 20 amps and under, you're, you're fine just using power cords, okay? You, you, you're fine just cutting power cords. You're not cutting them at all. Um, you're fine not cutting them at all and doing that stuff. And then you're also fine using regular outlets, regular electrical boxes. Um, I have a preference for the plastic ones. Uh, some people will want to go ahead and use the metal ones. The thing is, the DC power doesn't quite ground the same way. And we get a little better safety margin if we use the plastic boxes, especially in RV operations, uh, mobile type stuff, especially if there would be any possibility of propane or propane leaks or propane gas around. That's, that's one of those situations where if things go wrong, they go very wrong. Um, but yeah, there was a posting where somebody was just... You know, convinced you're going to burn the house down if you use conventional outlets with 12 volt. In my uh, couple of years of doing it, I'm, I'm not running into a problem. And when you start looking at, you know, little pull trigger devices, I've taken enough power tools apart in dealing with this type of stuff. They use the same wires on the inside as an AC power tool as they do on a DC power tool. The motors are wound a little differently, but switches and internal wiring, huh. It's not, it's not so different. You're going to run into an issue when you're looking at lower powered equipment. 